Hello, good morning, Dr. Fred and Mr. Eric and morning. classmates. Morning. Yes. Uh, today we will answer the leftover questions that we have during the webinar. So the first question is from Monica Tong. Um, in the future, if there will be a competitors who might open another ship hotel somewhere around Robinson, how are you going to make your hotel stand out? <laughs> That's a good question, yeah. <laughs> I guess I, I don't want to sound like I'm proud or whatever, but there is really just one and only Dulos Force, yeah? So there will be competitors, I'm sure, but, um, you know, there is just one McDonald's, mm -hmm. yeah? There is just one Starbucks, yeah? So in like manner, there is one Dulos Force. We will have to rise up to the uh, challenge of having uh, competitors here and there, but I think uh, we will have to focus on the fact that we are Dulos Force, the grand old lady of the seas. Yeah. So that's how we will try to, uh, you know, meet the new competitive market. Mm. I hope that answers your question, Monica. Yes, surely. And okay, then, next. Uh, <laughs> Let's move to question number two. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, for Hello, the question, morning. Good morning. Uh, for the question two, uh, is from Khan Hoa Fang. Uh, he have a question regarding promotion at this restaurant. Uh, are this any at this point given the COVID nineteen situation? Yes. Okay, thank you, Khan Hao Fan. Um, well, our hotel is closed now. Uh, it's been closed since uh, late March because of the COVID situation. Uh, yeah? But uh, to answer your question, you know, perennially uh, all over the world, I believe, and especially in our region, Singapore, Indonesia, uh, buffets are very, very popular. Yeah. And maybe if I would use the word exotic food, like, because if you have foreign visitors coming from all over the world uh, to taste Singapore style food, Indonesian style food, and maybe even introduce uh, ASEAN food, that'll be considered a little bit more different. They may not be able to get it in their own uh, countries. You know? mm -hmm. So that's what we are trying to do. And uh, we will do what we call a la carte buffets as part of our promos because uh, buffets as as long as the covid situation is still active uh, we have to do a la carte a la minute you mm. know eat all you can but we serve you a la minute rather than display the food uh, on the buffet tables yeah uh, so that's part of the uh, protocol for the new normal but uh, i i think focusing on buffets Will be will be the way to go, <clears throat> exotic buffets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yes, I agree. So let's move on to the question number three, and also quite similar to question number thirteen. So we combine together. So the question is, how do you market your hotel? Uh, how how can foreigner accept your hotel? And is information available in Agoda or Expedia? Also, can we also do direct booking through the website? Uh, this question is come from America. Uh, and also, what should be the role of the marketing department in promoting the tools for? The question is from Michelle. Guerrero. Yeah. All right, yeah. Amarita and Michelle, uh, wherever you are, we are, we are here in Singapore. Good morning. It may not be morning for you. Uh, but how do we hot market, like somebody mentioned about Agoda, Expedia, and what is the role of uh, marketing department? Huh? Now, we are not a big budget company. Yeah, uh, We do not have the budgets of multinationals that we can splurge in advertising, marketing, etc. But that is not going to be an obstacle. Yeah. Um, I have always held the view that we should combine sales, marketing, public relations, and advertisements, advertising. Yeah, 
So I, I look at these four as, as a, a family of, of, of activities or of, of functions. Yeah? So I have this thought in mind, like, you know, I've given this marketing a lot of thought because if we don't have proper marketing, I think we're going to lose out uh, getting the number of people in. But if you think carefully, uh, I don't want to elaborate. I want to give food for thought uh, to our uh, viewers. Uh. No one spends another person's money uh, as carefully as he or she would spend his own money. <laughs> you know, think deeply about that for a while. Um, I call this, I, I just came up with this phrase, um, empathic value. We empathize with the guest. What we feel will be the value that they want. We put ourselves in their shoes. Yeah, I don't want to give too many details. I want people to just think about it because uh, in, different, uh, in different companies, in different situations, your empathic values will be different. But many, if not all, focus on what I term as emphatic value. They emphasize, wow, our, our place is so nice. Our place has this and that and this is a big swimming pool. We have blah, 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 blah. They emphasize, emphasize, emphasize. I want to be a bit contrarian in my thinking. Yeah, and, and I want to do empathic value. Em empathize what we feel the customers want. And then from there, we do our sales, marketing, public relations, as well as advertising with very minimal budgets. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's what I can offer you. Yes, thank you. It's yeah. very detailed. Yeah. Um, this one is question number four. Let's see now. Go ahead, please. Uh, this for question four is from Nam Pyeong. Uh, after the COVID-19, uh, what are your specific plans to project a refresh the feeling when they book in your hotel? Yeah, I like the word refresh. Uh, thank you for using that word, Anamtran. Um, what I want to do as far as Dulos Force is concerned, and those of you who actually attended our earlier webinar and, uh, and maybe watched the YouTube recording, uh, I want to focus on stress relief activities. Uh. Stress relief activities is really more non-activity if you know what I mean. Uh, you may recall that I used the word, I'm going to market boredom. <laughs> and then somebody in one of the, one of the participants, hey, don't, don't market it as boredom, market it as a different word. You know, but I mean, basically, come and be pleasantly bored, you know. So is this kind of, you know, over the how many months uh, that we are all stressed up and we have pent up frustrations because we can't do this, we can't do that, we cannot go anywhere. And when we finally want to go, uh, we don't want to add to that stress. We want to de-stress. And to me, the way to de-stress is non-activity kind of uh, activity. Yeah. Uh, but we have to be very sure the one very important thing when guests come to our place, de-stress or you want to do whatever they must feel safe they must feel secure yeah and i've stressed this over and over again we have our very own protocols we have our own uh, beyond what we feel will be required but i don't want to emphasize that i'm not going to do emphatic marketing i'm going to do em empathic yeah <laughs> okay that's me yeah <laughs> Yes. Go ahead, next one. Thank you. Um, this one is a question from Kuwait. Is the sea robbery in the Singapore trade, especially those in vicinity of the ship hotel, be a concern? Could the past 60, 600 years of many sea pirate story in Singapore trade be used in the ship hotel unique selling point? Yeah, I know Kuwait. Uh, Kuwait is a very experienced uh maritime person yeah uh he attended 
one of my talks uh, some many months back, now, you know. Hi, Gwet, if you are listening in again. He used the word stories, and, and precisely that is what we will be doing. Dulos Force has countless stories in her history, yeah, uh, from the 1914 till now. But what I want to do is actually focus on stories that are. Um, that really excite those of you who have attended my talks. You know that I always like to tell stories. You know, yeah. And um, when you tell stories, uh, you can see people's eyes. Uh, they are so affixed, you know, and, and they are like expecting, "Hey, what's next? What's happening?" You know, I want to know more. And that is is something very interesting. Uh, you know, men, women, children, young and old. You know, they all love stories. Yeah, and. Maybe I share something with you. Huh? Um, I wrote uh, several songs. I composed several songs, which I will be using and I'll be getting my crew to actually uh, sing and perform and all that as part of our storytelling uh, activity, so to speak. Yeah? And, you know, the, the introduction goes like this. Quit. I, I, I didn't see your, your story till quite late. Huh? I mean, your question till quite late. But this I did, like, you know. It starts like this. Huh? My friends, come, gather around me, sit for a while, and let me tell you about the grand old lady of the seas. Truly, a nona sayang, a kapal cinta, called Dulos Foss. This, my friends, is her story. So this is the introduction, and then I, we go on to singing. You know, I don't want to sing this now, or people will leave the webinar immediately. <laughs> but you see, this is the story, you know? So uh, this is what we want to do. You know, in, in times of old biblical days even, uh, uh, people sit around the fire, you know? And they tell stories, and the stories are then passed on from generation to generation. So that is the kind of mood I want to uh, uh, get people to be into, la, you know. So yeah, so we will tell stories, uh, but maybe not pirate stories, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. so I forward yeah, to hear from some stories and, and getting our crew to sing songs together. Yeah, go ahead. We move on to question number six. Yes. So, do you think that uh, your hotel is an available place for people who want to staycation in this period? Is it uh, good to cooperation with government to become a retreat area? Uh, this question is come from Jerry. Yes. Thank you, Jerry. Yes. Um. Def definitely, we are. A nice place for a staycation. Uh, when we talk about staycation, I guess you can include Singaporeans uh, because Bintan uh, has always been known as the greater Singapore. You know, it's just one hour by fast ferry, luxury ferry from Singapore. So it it really is almost as though we are part of Singapore. So when we talk about staycations, I like to include Singaporeans as well as Indonesians. In fact, some Indonesians have to travel from Jakarta, for example, one and a half hours by plane, which is even longer than the Singaporeans going to Bintan. Yeah? So, yes, Bintan Resorts, where we are, is a gated community. They have several thousand hectares of private land owned by Bintan Resorts. Yeah? So it is already, in that sense, a restricted area, what we call a gated community, a private uh, place. Like, you know? Now, to arrange for staycation to open up during uh, this COVID times, yeah, it needs not just the Indonesian side. The Indonesian governments are very ready, they are very willing, and they are very able to open Bintan Resorts. In fact, just a couple of days ago, delegation from uh, central government and all the ministers all came. 
and they had several uh, meetings and all to check out Bintan to see how ready we are, you know, to receive guests. Huh? So the Indonesian side is very ready. Yeah, Jerry. But you can't be ready just uh, unilaterally. You need the Singapore government, the Malaysian government, the Philippines government, wherever all the people around us to be also willing, able, and ready to say, yes, let's have what they may call a green lane or whatever they call it now, so that you can have uh, travelers coming in and out. Meaning to say Indonesians can go to that particular country and that particular country can also come to uh, Bintan. Yeah? Now, if we attract Singaporeans, uh, I would say that uh, people from Singapore, rather, I would say that ma mainly it will be Singapore residents, unless Singapore also opens its doors to international travellers. Mm -hmm. So if there are not many international travellers coming into Singapore, then th there won't be enough international travellers coming from Singapore to Bintan. Yeah. So uh, I guess the word staycation is the right word to use. Uh, let's focus on Singaporeans and Indonesians and be ready. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for your good time. So the next question is also of managing of question of two questions. Um, in the post COVID-19 er era, how can the Dulles for hotel strategy in increasing booking this question is from Ashe Mashi. And this is, do you think there might be changes? There might be changes in the expectations of visitors staying at hotel post-COVID? And how do you think the Dulles Forum, as well as other hotels, will adapt to these changes? From Tommy. Okay, thank you, Ashke and Tommy. Uh, I've decided to like, maybe as I read through the questions, I uh, combine these two together because they are along the same vein. Uh, yeah? uh, now, Ash K. Masay spoke about post-COVID strategies in, in, in increasing bookings. Uh. No, I'm not a technically inclined person, you know, I, I, don't, <coughs> I don't particularly go for online things and that, you know. Uh, this is my old school, uh, yeah. So I'm a very strong proponent, actually, of word of mouth, and uh, word of mouth has always been very helpful in our businesses in Singapore. You know, in in the past, over the past many years since I I started my own business, and uh, it has proven to be that kingpin, so to speak. You know, perhaps working better for us than many other forms of advertisements and marketing, et cetera, et cetera. So to increase bookings, you know, people believe what their friends say, you know. So if their friends and people say, hey, this is a wonderful place, come check it out. And then they see some photos, they say, it is more likely that they will come than, they, than just listen to your advertising, uh, you know words uh, yeah and also um meet uh how do we uh meet the expectations uh, uh how will we in duros force and others adapt that's from tommy yeah? again i think the key word tommy is adapt yeah yes we must adapt but there are things that we we can't adapt for example if we can adapt to their changing expectations then we do, but we don't adapt, only adapt, but we adapt and we change and we manage rather the changed expectations. We must be able to manage it so that we meet or exceed those expectations. But there will be cases where we cannot, for whatever reason, we cannot uh, meet or adapt to their expectations. Then what do we do? Now, this takes uh, some a very high degree of what I would term as honesty and integrity. Yeah? If you cannot adapt, don't try to bluff your way through. Yeah? No problem. Come, ma'am. Come, sir. You know, no problem. And then come, people feel disappointed. Then your word of mouth uh, will work against you rather than for you. Yeah? So, 
we must be able to swing their expectations, as I would call them, in a proper, honest, and in way with full of integrity. Yeah, I want to stress these two points. Huh? And we create new expectations for them. You know, um, focus on our strong points, our unique selling points and propositions, our attributes. If we do that, there is this power of suggestion. I think all of us agree mm. that <clears throat> you just say a few words, you know. If, if I tell you, if I say the word exotic, you, you may be thinking of, you know, maybe even Vietnam, uh, uh, Thailand, Bali, you know, all the culture, deep, deep rooted historical culture, so exotic. If I use the word tranquil, you know, you think of, wow, beautiful seaside, you know, calm uh, seas, light, gentle breezes, etc., etc. So the power of suggestion is very important. Yeah. So I feel that, uh, Tommy, if uh, we cannot meet the expectations, let's suggest to them that, hey, try something different because this is where we are good at. This is what we are good at. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I hope uh, for Ashke and Tommy, uh, this will give you some food for thought. And I think it will work for not just the hotel industry, but for many other industries. Yeah. Right. What else do we have? Uh, yes, for the question X, uh, considering uh, is it one of, uh, of this kind of uh, experiment, how the one to compare the operation cost of running this hotel with traditional hotel? Does this command a higher maintenance cost? Do you see a risk where you will be able to cut costs? when traditional hotel can? This question, it comes from Amit Gupta. All right. Thank you, Amit. And I see you have not just asked this question, I believe you have asked a couple of other questions. Let's take it one at a time, yeah? It's, it's actually a very good question. Uh, yes, we have higher maintenance costs than in most other land-based hotels, even though we are already on land. Yeah, because we are beside the sea, our ship is steel and steel rust by the seaside. So rust containment, rust management becomes very important and it is costly, you know, uh, treating rust, preventing rust, putting rust inhibitors, etc. All these are very much uh, additional costs that uh, concrete buildings really don't really don't really need, uh, you know. So we must look at it from a, not just cost cutting, uh, but really a cost containment. I like this term, cost containment. It's not my term. It's is a well used uh, term in economics and and whatsoever. Yeah. So cost containment uh, requires us maybe to have new paradigms, new thinking. Uh, habits, new thinking patterns. Uh. Many people use technology, say in, in, in uh, hospitality, you know, uh, you, you use uh, different programs and all that, you cut down the number of people, you know, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, and, and it's, it's very efficient. That may well be the case. It, it is 100% true. But a guy like me, <laughs> uh, I like the old style. You know, nowadays, uh, and I do tell my bankers, you know, when I go to the banks, uh, I, I feel I don't get the warm service. The, I get very cold service. Good morning, sir. Good morning, madam. How can we help you? And then do, 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 do. And then when it's your turn, you know, they ring a bell, ding, and then your number appears on the screen, you know. It's, it's very uh, cold. Uh. In the days of old, uh, when you come in, uh, the bank manager will come out and greet you, you know. Hey, hello, Eric. How have you been? Long time no see. Uh, I say, yeah, I haven't come. No money. What for come, you know? <laughs> Things like that, you know? So that kind of relationship is kind of lost and put in the wayside uh, in these days of high technology. Uh, yeah? So, but I want to 
maybe if I don't reduce my cost enough, it doesn't matter. I want to stress on the old time, heart to heart kind of uh, service, you know. And in Indonesia, the Indonesians, I am so glad to say they are naturally friendly, naturally polite, naturally courteous. So it's not difficult to train them mm. to, to give heart-to-heart -heart service. In fact, you almost don't need to train them. Just give them a few parameters and leave it to their natural self to do it. So cost containment should come from other places. Reduce wastage, for example, and that is really a major issue. If we reduce wastage, but we don't reduce our cost just by cutting corners and giving less to the customers, no. Yeah, reduce wastage. And that will kind of uh, balance out the, the additional cost of our uh, high maintenance. So all said, if you, you look at it as a total package, uh, some parts may, uh, the cost may increase, some parts may, may uh, be decreased. Yeah? But overall, whatever we do, when we do cost containment, it must never affect the good service that we're going to provide to our customers. I think that is paramount. Okay, I guess that's enough said. <laughs> if I go on like this, you know, one hour, two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not enough. Mm. Um, this question is also from Nick. Uh, how do you plan to position your ho this hotel in the luxury segment or lower than that? Okay, Amit. Um, I would say that beauty as well as luxury is in the eyes of the beholder. I'm sure you heard that, that uh, word before. Uh, I just share with you an example. Some time back, I went fishing with a group of friends, you know. So we rented a small old wooden launch, timber launch. And we went out to sea and we started fishing. I tell you, I enjoyed it so much. I had a time of my life. Then some of my friends said, Are you Erica, I think next time let's let's uh, book a yacht with creature comforts. No, luxury. You go inside the cabin, you have aircon, you go outside, you no, know, it's so nice and beautiful. I said, no, 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 no. I want oil lamps in my, in, in my uh, fishing boat. Yeah? I want to smell the diesel even as I sit there and I fish. And I, I enjoyed it. I, I actually soaked in the old time feel, you see. So what does that tell me? It tells me that to one person is luxury, to another person is no, I prefer something different. So luxury as well as beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. So we have to be careful to be able to try and meet the expectations, the different expectations of people but in a nutshell uh you know the french have a nice saying i i i, I can't i can't speak french but it's like viva la difference yeah let's celebrate the difference so dulos force is indeed different so if we want to talk about positioning i don't want to position myself as luxury or lower than luxury or higher let's try to position ourselves as difference <laughs> i don't know if that's the correct spelling uh, that, that's the correct pronunciation huh? but viva la difference yeah yeah <laughs> uh remember in the earlier webinar i said we market boredom right so that is difference yeah okay yes i think i'll be the next question right uh, for the question 10 is until um, nobody know when will the tourist uh, tourism industry get back on to its feet. Uh, what is your expectation around booking over next one year after the rain opening? Uh, the question is from also Amit. Amit, yeah. Yes. Amit, you use the word, let me see where, uh, 
Nobody knows. Yeah? Yes. Uh, let me tell you, uh, I am part of the nobody. <laughs> I don't know. I can only guess, and my guess is as good as yours, as good as Fred's, as good as anybody's, yeah? Um, it is too volatile, uh, the situation today. You know, all of a sudden, somebody, some country opens up, and then suddenly there's a second wave come in, and they, they have to do a partial lockdown again. And it has happened in many, many countries. So it is a, a bit too difficult. I don't have a crystal ball, yeah? And uh, it also depends very much on whether a, a truly uh, effective, affordable, and freely available vaccine is, uh, becomes available, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah? And uh, whether the economies in the various countries all will be affected, you know, they're going to have a recession, they're going to have whatever, and then it limits the spending power of the people. We don't know. So all I can say that I have learned a lesson in my school days, in my younger days. I was a Boy Scout. And I don't know if the Boy Scouts still have used the same motto, but in my days, the motto for Boy Scouts was, be prepared. <laughs> so what, I'll, what I, I just tell my team is, let's just be prepared. If it opens tomorrow, we are prepared. If it opens six months from now, we better be prepared, <laughs> yeah? Not just um, uh, in terms of the facilities also, but, you know, with finances. It's taking a toll on many, many countries, and there are already many victims all over the world. Uh, uh, places have to close for good, yeah? Uh, file for bankruptcy, etc., etc. So let's be prepared in every aspect. Whether we can be or not is another different thing. Huh? Yeah. Uh, but let's try our best to be prepared. Yes. Right, Amit? Yes, I understand. Thank you. So, Thank you. move on to next questions from Colin. As a result of these difficult times, how do you change the way you attract your customer base, utilizing your website and other online platforms? This is from Colin, right? Yes. Okay, Colin, um, I'm a little bit embarrassed, a bit <laughs> concerned also, because you asked about how do we uh, attract uh, by utilizing our website. If you go online and go to our website now, you will find that even up to today, our website is not really fully functional, fully uh, with all the details. Yeah? I guess I'm, I'm to blame for that. I, I have to take responsibility for that. Yeah? But um, I, I, I guess I'm just very a non, this, I don't know what you call it, new technology kind of thing. I go by the old school way, you know. Uh, I, I think I must make changes. I must adapt to these changes and become less scared, you know, about doing online kind of things. But not just website. Even if I use website, I use uh, social media. You know, I, I learned this way back in the 70s. Huh? And I've shared with Fred and his team or so. This acronym AIDA. Huh? Uh, for marketing, right? Uh, advertising, etc. A, attention. I, interest. D, desire. And the final A, uh, action. So you start with by uh, creating attention. Get the attention of people. Then from the attention, you increase to interest. And from interest, you, you develop it further into a desire. And that desire will convert into action. Now, for, for the website and all that, huh, what I think I will do is focus on attention and leave the rest to the individuals. The attention is, uh, in, in my opinion, I may be wrong, uh, people may disagree, I mean, there are different opinions, but to me, getting the attention is so paramount. Huh? Yeah? So, 
if we just get the attention and don't go into too much verbiage, too much details on what we have, what we can do, create the interest for us, just get them to be uh, attentive to that, that we are there, we exist. I think if we do that, the rest will quite naturally follow. So in our website, in our, the various social media, Colin, uh, maybe that's me, but I'll just go for attention first. Right? That's all I have. I'm, I'm no, uh, what, what do they call it? Am I a geek or am I a nerd or am I a what? <laughs> Fred, what do you call someone like me? A nerd, is it? A romantic. A romantic. <laughs> <laughs> like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a high five. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. We have only one question left. Wow. Uh, but, but then the question is when the hotel uh, reopened, would you like to share what you intend to do with the staff to perhaps leave their moral? and deliver best customer service. This question will come from Vietnam. Vietnam, okay. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry to say Vietnam that we have no staff. We have crew. <laughs> Just like if you remember, I mentioned in our earlier seminar, we don't have hotel rooms. We have cabins. Yeah, but I, 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 let me answer your question. Huh? Yeah, no, we will not be waiting till when, till when we reopen to start motivating our crew. We have already started the motivation process, so to speak. And it's not a, a, a program of motivation. The motivation comes, I believe, and again, Fred, uh, this is the romantic part of us coming out. Huh? <laughs> the, the motivation starts with that relationship that we try to develop between ourselves and our crew. Yeah, uh, We want to be that example to them. Yeah, It's just like, again, the uh, old cliche, you know, you see a duck swimming in the, in the lake, you know so gracefully, uh, but underneath uh, the, the duck's feet are paddling like crazy, nobody knows, no? Yeah? So we, we, <laughs> we portray ourselves to be calm, but within ourselves, we are still also very concerned. We have to take action to be prepared, you know, for whatever eventualities. Uh. So, but we have started that sort of motivation, uh, that sort of relationship building where they identify with us and they are it's not the them and us kind of a syndrome anymore yeah and i think that is one of the best motivations we don't want to talk about hey when we open uh, don't worry you know you're going to get this and that you're going to get more service charge oh wow 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 rah, 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 you know and then after a month or two still cannot open what service charge are we talking about you know so we want to hold them to an expectation of a bright future. But when that bright future will come, nobody knows. Now, in the past uh, seminar, uh, webinar, sorry, I spoke about benevolent dictatorship, those of you who may remember. As I was looking at this question, that term popped up to mind, benevolent dictatorship. That means it's a top-down approach, you know. Uh, we tell you what to do. In times like this, you just do it because it's very vital. If we don't do it, we may lose out. But when we reopen, when we are getting ready to reopen, benevolent as it may be, I don't think it must be. A, it should be a top-down anymore. It should rather be a bottom-up again. Yeah, go back to bottom-up. And when I say bottom up, I, I think this will draw a lot of um, argument, a lot of uh, discussion and debate. Our people should pursue self-interest. In some other aspects, I also say that, hey, you must be just not be self-seeking. 
you must think of others. But in this context, I want to say that we should pursue self-interest. Now, it's not what they term as narrow self-interest. Narrow self-interest is I, me, myself. I don't care what happens to others. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. Generally, all of us here, when we talk about self-interest, it is self-interest that is very positive. Why do I come to work? Because I want to provide for my family. I need an income. I want to be able to have uh, ability to rise up in the ranks yeah, and, and to have career opportunities, etc., etc. So, But these are self-seeking in that sense. They are what I call self-interest motivations. And it's good. It's very positive. When we... Uh, uh, try to pursue our self-interest, whether it's for money, it's for promotions, for whatever. What do we do? We treat our customers well. We do our duties diligently. We go beyond the call of duty, etc., etc. And when we do that, our self-interests are achieved. But in so doing, as we achieve our self-interest, we achieve the interest of the company. We achieve the expectations uh, of the customers. They come back, they have good word of mouth, they spread the word around, etc. So it all starts with self-interest. But a word of caution, as I said, don't let it be narrow. Yeah? That emphatic, not emphatic, sorry, that empathic, uh, nature must come up. As I pursue my own self-interest, I also pursue the interests of others. Because I must realize that if I let them uh, achieve what they desire, I, de I also achieve my own desires. Yeah? Do unto others as you would others do unto you, the golden rule. Something like that, huh? Okay, I, I'm I'm quite contrary, and maybe I should close. I this is the last question, right? Yeah, I close by saying that. Also, I want to teach my crew not to have a sense of false humility. You know, when you have false humility, humility, you tend to feel that I'm I'm no good. I'm I'm nothing. When people say, wow, you're so good, huh? no, I'm not, nah, you know, don't, nah, don't give me praise, nah, my head grows bigger. No, no, no. If you are good, you are good. But receive it in humility, but not false humility. When you are good, huh? and you say to yourself, you, you actually have positive vibes within yourself. And you know that, yes, I want to share my strengths with my, the customers. I want to give of my best. And I know my best is good. Yeah, That is, again, the power of suggestion. When you say to yourself you are good and you honestly believe you are good and not just believe, but you actually are good. Accept it. Yeah? Uh, but don't take all the honor and the glory. No, I'm not saying that. Yeah? But just know that you are good. I think there's some old Arab uh, proverbs like that. They say, those who know and know not that they know, they are asleep. Wake them. <laughs> yeah. So you are good, but you don't know that you are good. It means you are asleep. So your friends must sh shake you. Wake up, wake up. Know that you are good. Yeah, this, this just popped into my head. <laughs> okay, that was from whom? Vietnam. Huh? So I, I hope uh, that kind of uh, wraps up uh, just what, what I have to say. Huh? Okay, um, Eric, thank you again for 
I know you're a very busy. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm enjoying <laughs> I always enjoy your company. <laughs> oh, okay. In that case, we'll keep on inviting you. <laughs> our students are the ones who really benefit from, from right, this. And I of course, so. our we'll audience. Do, yeah. yeah. So we'd like uh, to share to as much, a, many people. Don't be, don't be afraid to think contrarian style, you know? Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, thank you all also for. Uh, sparing time during this Saturday morning.